No, Lou is like, I love Chinese weightlifting. I just hate people <laughs> who are fans of Chinese weightlifting. It's so different, Seb. It's not the same thing. No, no. <laughs> All right, guys, we just got a little bit heated, but let's let's <laughs> let's move on to Team China. So I did a video talking about who's going to be selected for Team China, but it just still seems like it's a topic that people are most interested in. I get a lot of questions constantly, like, is Tian Tao going to go to the Olympics? Um, I did a video. I went through by percentage of makes, number of big competition wins that each athlete has had, uh, the number of competitive athletes in that category who might disrupt a gold. Um, I think within this, because I know you two both love to have a good rant about uh, squat jerk, so I've got some stats for you. Um, men on the Chinese time, uh, on the Chinese side, 68.29% makes. Women are 77.46%. So the women are about 10% more likely to make lifts. They do happen to all uh, split jerk, whereas the men don't. And Tian Tao, 45.5% uh, m- m- uh, make percentage. So uh one do you think tian's going and two uh i'll give you five minutes between you to just rant about squat jerk uh, as far as the knowing who's going i have no idea and i think you're what much more educated and much more well researched uh but i will say this like as much as i clown on the squat jerk because it doesn't really biomechanically make any sense at all if you win you win so winning the right. meet is what matters right yeah. and yeah Team China have found a way to consistently win. So it doesn't matter. So let's put that out there before either Owen or I are seen because we get comments on your channel from the last (laughs) video specifically for for coaching Lu Zhao Jun. Yeah. Why don't you, you go know, lift in the A session? Like, that's my favorite one. You're like, okay. Because no I one, can't. Why is this? I didn't qualify. What's it's like, no other sport has this. No one else goes, why don't you go play in the NBA? So if you're going to criticize <laughs> LeBron, like, no other sport has this except yes. for weightlifting. Yes. You can't say anything because you, uh, like, ugh. It's like, it's, it's, it's like this, right? Like, I imagine if uh, some kid is unbelievably elite with their numbers in the snatch and then also clean and squat jerking, right? To the to the level of like, maybe this is like a variable exercise for them, right? Like doing a power jerk. And then what they realize is their total from snatching and clean and power jerking is not just competitive, but it's the best in the world. Now we have the opportunity to take this child who's very comfortable doing this thing and switching him to the proper jerk that's been proven over time. It's similar to like, uh, the Fosbury flop in in, uh, in 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 high, high jumping. Jump. There used to be the scissor kick, right? Which was that was the com- the most common one. You basically barrel roll over the top until Dick Fosbury created the Fosbury flop, where you go over backwards. Everyone mm-hmm. thought that was crazy. Even people who thought that the s- squatting movements were silly, right? Because it's much more. You know, it's a much more compensated position to be in a to catch the barbell in a low position. It's not as powerful, right? Mm-hmm. So we saw split cleans, split snatches. There was even an article that you need to check out that says why squat snatching and squat cleaning is wrong. And you know, it's it's one of those things. It's like if we're gonna take this kid and not just introduce him, but who already has elite numbers and and try and change him or all we have to do is take their snatch to this number which we're dead sure he's going to get take their clean and jerk to this number which we're dead sure he's going to get and we're going to win and that's exactly what team china are doing so i'm not going to go sit here and say that they're doing anything wrong per se but when we say that the split jerk is the most effective it's really not up for debate right Mm -hmm. And apparently the Chinese actually do coach all of their weightlifters to split jerk first. And then later on, athletes decide whether they want to squat jerk or not. So, like, I think they recognize that the split is the way. Yeah, and I think, but, like, the variability of the power jerk, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things, you know, some people are just going to, you know, we're going to be like, hey, today we're not going to split. We're just going to work on power jerk. Some people are going to be like, oh, my God, I'm horrible at that. But some people are going to do 
what they do in the split jerk almost is precisely the numbers and they might even be more consistent. The problem is when you get better and better and better and your clean gets higher and higher and higher and higher, you know, like then it's like, okay, now you're going to have to get lower on your on your power jerk. Okay, yeah. now you're going to squat to catch this jerk, which is just insane. So, th like, yeah, like, so that's kind of the process there when, I, when I'm thinking. All right, the Lu Jun hater wants to speak. Come on then. What have I, you got? I uh, actually, no, Lu <laughs> is like, I love Chinese weightlifting. I just hate people... <laughs> who are fans of Chinese weightlifting. It's so different, Seb. It's not the same thing. No, no, no. My thing is people shilling Chinese weightlifting like it's secrets, but that's definitely that's mm -hmm. definitely a video for a different time. Um, I would probably make the argument that uh, I, I definitely believe that Liu, Shijiang, Tiantou all feel better and can lift more power jerking or squat jerking. But I would make the argument that, so the numbers you quoted there, I would probably make the argument that it would be worth minus... 10 kilos off their total if they could consistently hit that 10 kilos less all the time like how many more world championships would Tanteo have gotten if he had clean jerk 225 or if Lou could clean jerk 200 kilos at any competition you know how much more consistent he wouldn't have lost in 2010 to uh, Sigma or uh, Matt Sorian at uh, Tigran yeah, yeah Matt Rossian you know it's worth a few kilos you know a few kilos off if you can be way more consistent because that's where everyone split jerks are the most mislift in competition across all lifters international or otherwise it's the most mislift so there's just no good reason to give yourself more variability to like to reduce your chance of missing more uh, mm -hmm. even if you can't lift a certain amount more you know if it's like it's probably not going to be 10 kilos you know it could be less you know a certain percentage but I, in my opinion it's it's too late now obviously i'm obviously joking when i say it's lou can still learn to split jerk you know it's it's too late but um you know when they're doing that developmental stage like zach's talking about it's probably worth that consistency more often rather than the once absolute numbers. And I know you're talking about um, it. You only need one to win, and I, I I totally see where that's coming from. That makes sense. But in terms of looking at an athlete's career, um, more medals is better than one medal, for example. So uh, more is mm -hmm. more is more more is more than more less. You know, like it does like it doesn't make sense to yeah. a bigger number is more than a smaller number. So you're better off with more medals than you are less medals, in my opinion. So if you can make 80% of your jerks as opposed to 46% of your jerks. To me on paper, it's like, okay, do we want to be kind of um, kind of cavalier with this lifter yeah. and how they feel? Or do we want to guarantee consistent good totals? You know, that's kind mm -hmm. of the way I would, I would think about it. Uh, again, obviously, it's too late for Liu and Tenta. They're not going to change anymore. Although we did see someone like Apti Alkadov. He changed from uh, split yeah. jerk. Uh, David Rigard said he couldn't bend his back knee. And he changed to a phenomenal... Mm -hmm squat jerk was what i'd probably call that mm -hmm. but for most people you know it's um like i get it they probably feel better but i would be kind of the, the side of things that maybe it's it's worth that a mm -hmm. little bit less in performance but way more consistent yeah so i think like what you're essentially saying is if you can hit 10 you know if you can clean jerk 225 with 80 percent accuracy rather than 230 but with like 30 percent accuracy like tian tao maybe you would actually do better in the long run if you were just more consistent and you didn't hit quite as heavy a weight but you more consistently hit a 225 yeah imagine the psychological aspects like you know when you're, you talk about lashley coming out and we know exact we know for a fact he's going to hit those lifts like we know that and yeah, yeah. if we know that can you imagine what lashley knows in his brain so compared yeah, to someone yeah. like lou coming out um he's like jeez I'm going to clean this two weight probably pretty easy, but there's like, who knows what's going to happen on the squat jerk? Like he probably doesn't know. He's, mm -hmm. He believes he's going to make it, but no one's really sure. Like you're, when you're mm -hmm. watching it, she's young, yeah. could come out and power clean the world record, but him and everybody else are like, mm, he's, there's a good chance he'll mm -hmm. miss this for no reason, you know? So yeah. psychologically, yeah. if I know I can nail that lift, uh, you know, when training, when you're about to hit a big PB, you're nailing like 90, 95% consistently for weeks on end. And like you're, it's not even the PB's already done because you've hit those lifts so often. You know, you were like, "Fuck, I've I've nailed a hundred kilo snatch. I'm gonna nail one. I've snatched one hundred kilos five times in the last two three weeks. I'm gonna nail one o five next week." You know, you're confident as shit. And I know they're elite level lifters and obviously very confident, but you want to increase their confidence as much as possible and consistency. And as a coach, when you're selecting attempts, like you don't want to be like, "We'd probably make this." You want to be like, "Damn, there's a good chance he's yeah, gonna yeah. make this." You know. <laughs> 